welcome back to my channel. So today is day four of Mega Goal Week, and for these last two days, we're actually going to be focusing sort of on one really big part of the whole goal setting project for 2022 that I wanted to just sort of divide into two days. So today we're gonna to be focusing on going through all of the different notebooks that I use on a yearly basis. So these are going to be the notebooks that I really only ever talk about during my yearly setup because they're stuff that I just sort of use throughout the year, but they don't require any other setup after I do this kind of initial setup in November, which is when I'm filming this. And then on Friday, I went to go ahead and fill in kind of as much as I can in spreads to sort of show you how I get everything ready because again, this is not something that necessarily comes up in any other videos. And I did this last year because I decided to just film while I was um, filling everything in and I actually thought it was kind of interesting to, to see because obviously I show you in the plan with me is like how I actually set things up, but I almost never actually go through and fill in the pages and then you only see the end result after, you know, for example, a monthly, at the end of the month you see the end result. So that's going to be the next two days. So for Thursday, we are going to focus on really looking at nailing down the different goals that I want to do, taking a look at some of the different notebooks that I am going to use, and I take this opportunity to kind of show you some of the other notebooks that I use. So the first big thing that is going to stay the same this year that was a change for me last year is I am not using the Projo anymore, and this is not because I dislike it in any way, shape, or form. Um, if you go back to some of my older videos when I was using the Projo, I actually really, really like the system. What it ultimately came down down into is that I wanted to have the flexibility of setting it up myself in my bullet journal and it ended up doing kind of bullet journal and projo ended up being just a little bit too much so the way that I had switched that the way that I had changed things for this past year so for 2021 was that I introduced sort of quarterly planning pages in front of so before January before April before right before all of those first month in the next quarter and that has actually been working out really well I have kind of changed things up a little bit and I think I'm going to sort of keep things the way that I've done them so when I initially started I was doing a three page quarterly spread so basically kind of an intro page on the right hand page and then a full spread where I had my quarterly goals and then a running list which is basically an Alistair method sort of task list and what I realized is that that running list was useful initially but I didn't need one every quarter. I essentially used, you know, let's say I used about half of it the first quarter, maybe a third of it the second quarter, a little bit less, like a quarter the third quarter. And so by the fourth quarter, I was like, I'm gonna have like two things on here. It's not worth like wasting a page. So I think that what I wanna end up doing, and we're gonna see this over at the table, but I think what I wanna end up doing is keep that two page quarterly setup and keep a running list in my front of Bujo pages that I'll just kind of use on and off throughout the year. And if I run out of space, then I'll just make a new one and I'll just page thread it. I think that's gonna be the way that that goes. Cause that then, that takes out one page at a quarterly level that wasn't like super duper useful, but I keep the pages that I did find useful. And then the other thing that I think I'm going to keep up because honestly, I really like it. I think it works really well for me is I'm going to keep the one page weekly and one page of dailies per week. So it's, I use one spread per week and on the left hand side, I have my general categories of things and on the right hand side, I have my tasks by day. And I really like this. This is another adaptation from the Projo where basically you would have the weekly sort of overview and you would have categories of tasks, but you didn't have tasks by day. And so what I found that this really helps me with is I set up at the beginning of the week, I set up like these are kind of the big things I wanna hit this week. And there, you know, I have work, social media basically and personal and then I also have a review section so having those three categories really kind of covers all of my bases uh, you know I frequently will throw in like so sewing goals or you know paperwork I have to do if I have to clean if I have to do grading like whatever that's going to come up during the week I throw it on that weekly and then as I see how my week goes I move those specific tasks into dailies when I'm like planning to do it that day and I found that this like this helps me from having to migrate a large number of tasks like day to day or week to week because though like the majority of them just live on the weekly and I only put them on my daily when I'm planning to do them and so I have found that this really helps keep my dailies more under control and more manageable so I'm not looking at like 12 different things because I had you know migrated other stuff and so I think I am going to keep it I had this like brief thought that I was like oh maybe I want to set it up a little bit differently but like honestly 
The only reason I would change the setup is to change the aesthetic a little bit and that's not really a good enough reason for me to do it at this point. If I get inspired and I decide to do it, that's fine. But what I do really like about this is I find that it is a good, the, the system seems to be working well for me. We'll put it that way. So I wanna keep that as well. In terms of other kind of big things, and again, we're gonna kind of look at this over at the table. I'll show you kind of all the notebooks and how things have been going. I have kind of uh, a little bit of a hesitation with my language log. I've actually only got 12 spreads left, but I still need to fit in December. So I am gonna need a new notebook for my language log, and this might be a time for me to consider whether or not I want to keep doing it. I am leaning towards still tracking it. I like not having it in my bullet journal. I like keeping my language stuff as a separate thing that I can kind of see the overview with. And so I think that that's the plan. What I don't know is if there is, maybe I can adapt the way that I do my spreads. So I have been doing my spreads in my language log for a really long time. I did at one point change the color code but I have kept the same color code for probably a year or two at this point and I don't know necessarily that I want to change the color code um, honestly the only reason I ever do is to use different Tombow markers since I have the full set of them and so maybe I will look at doing a new color code but I have the same activities and the same code. So like, you know, Korean is always a K, Spanish is always an I, et cetera, et cetera. Like those are all the same. So maybe what I can do is go to a single page and stop doing the legend basically, or do one month, if I change my color code, do one more month where I have the legend. And then from then on do that, because that would mean that of the 12 spreads, I could actually get 24 months on them. I think I would probably end up doing one more spread with, and actually, you know what, I think this might be what we do. One more spread with the new color code, and then I'll have 11 spreads left, which will give me 22 months, which will mean that I can fit all of next year in, and then I can, you know, if I need like tracking, and then I will think about doing a new language log in 2023. I think that's gonna be kind of the way that we do that. So what I might end up doing is setting up that a little bit, um, just so that, I'm, I remember that that's what I wanted to do because, you know, it's November. Uh, will I remember in January what I was planning on doing two months ago? I don't know. We'll see about that. So I think that's going to be one thing. We are definitely going to have to chat about reading challenge. Uh, so the reading challenge and my sewing stuff, but we'll do that over the table because it'll be easier to see. And the other big one is I will be starting my last year in my, fi my Some Lines a Day notebook. Uh, so I started it in 2018. So I have all of 2018, 19, 20, and 21, and it's a five-year book. So 2022 is actually my last year. So through the course of this year, I'm going to have to decide if this is something that I want to purchase again. I have started my habit of journaling every single day. And so I have kind of considered like, oh, is this something that I like really need to do? But on the other hand, I actually, I think I do still want to do it because what I've noticed is that it helps me remember little moments because I see like, you know, when I do this year, I see the previous three years, whereas with my long form journals, I have you know a year in a journal, but I don't have that like side by side sort of looking back through the years sort of thing. So I think I do wanna do that, but I am going to be starting the fifth year in there. And then the other one is going to be my longhand journal. And I think that I'm actually going to stay in the same notebook. Last year, I was using a, I think I was using a Stayology in 2020 and I had used about two thirds of it. And I was like, well, I definitely don't have enough for another year. Um, so I'll start a new one. But this year I actually have at least half of it left. And some days I wrote more, some days I wrote less and this, that and the other. But I think I am gonna try and fit another year in here just because I hate wasting all of that paper. And this one has a lot of paper in it. So I'll, I'll show you a quick peek in there as well. So those are kind of just like the general overviews. But what we're gonna do for today is I'm gonna take you over to the table and we're gonna kind of go through everything. I'm gonna show you the 2022 goals that I've already thought of. We might do a little bit of brainstorming for some other goals. I don't really know if that's gonna come up or not. Like, you know, we'll see how that goes. And then I. I will start planning out how I want to actually do my spreads. And then the plan is to keep this from getting to be a super, super, super long video. I will do filling in of spreads on Friday. So without further ado, let's head on over. So I have a giant, oh my goodness, a giant pile of notebooks. I even have my 
come on over here, my current bullet journal, so that we can take a look at everything that's gonna be going on. So, before we kind of dive into the planning, I do wanna just sort of quickly go through and show you some of the sort of secondary notebooks that I was talking about in the intro. So, first up, we're gonna actually just start with my longhand journal. So, my longhand journal is actually this notebook. It is by Galen Leather Company, so they actually sent me a couple of things last year, and I am using their, or I have been using their leather notebook cover um, for this entire year, and I really like this. I'm actually gonna use this cover again next year. But what's really cool is this journal actually has Tomori River paper, and so you can see here I have my little, the little leather piece, which is like a blotter, which someone in the comments told me last year, so thank you for that. So you can see here, the, these are the pages that I've already used, and this is what I've got left, and I'm actually like not even at halfway yet. I think I've got till about like here to get to halfway. And so, you know, because I have been, you know, writing all year long and I am under halfway and it is now the beginning of November, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna just keep this notebook and I'm gonna try and get through two calendar years in it just so that I don't waste the paper basically because it is a really nice notebook, it is really nice paper and, you know, I like to start a new notebook when, I, like I like to fit an entire year in a longhand journal and so in this case, I think I'll have the space. So that one is gonna be the same and this is just in the normal notebook cover that I use. So this is actually one of my collab ones with uh, choose to do. So I just have that in there and like the other little, I have a blotting paper and this, but I actually don't keep pens in here because I use rotating fountain pens and so I just keep those in the pen cup on my desk. So this one, I am going to still keep my longhand journal. I'm just keeping the same one as I had last year. I actually, because it is still November and I am still writing in this, I think what I'll end up doing is, so I had actually put a quote in sort of the first page here. I just had like the fly paper. So I think what I might actually do is go back and I'll write in like 2021 on this paper. And then when I get to the end of the year and I'm ready to start 2022, I'll skip a page and I'll mark 2022 just so I can kind of see it. But I obviously, I don't know how much I'm going to write between now and the end of the year. So I can't do that quite yet, but that's the plan for this one. The other one I wanted to show you real quick is this is where I keep my some lines a day. So this is actually one of my first choose to do notebook. You'll notice a lot of choose to do notebook covers. I have several and I use them to house the journals that I use the most. So this is one of the, I think this is actually the first one that I got. And so I just keep my some lines a day in here cause it keeps the spine like a little bit, like it doesn't get as dirty when I put it on my table. So that's really nice. Obviously when I finish this notebook, I will take it out of the notebook cover and I'll put like, you know, the new one in because I think I'm going to get another one. So I actually got this one in 2018, as you can see here, and I am almost done. So kind of a quick flip. You can see I'm almost done with my fourth year in here. And so basically what I did up here is I actually write down in pencil on the left here, what pen I use for the entire year because I know I'm a super nerd. It's fine, like don't, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so because I have one more year in here, I think that that'll go on my list of things to buy in 2022 is to get a new one of these for 2023 because I actually do really enjoy doing this and I think it'll be a really nice like memory to have. And honestly, I'm so proud of myself for like basically going four years strong. Like I, w I think I'm gonna actually do all five years, which is really cool. So that one, we still have another year in. And then the other one that we were talking about that's kind of before we dive into really like goal related stuff is my language log. So again, another two studio notebook cover. This is my latest talk to me in Korean notebook. I have not done anything in months literally so long. Uh, the end of March was the last time I did a lesson in here. I've just been doing other stuff language wise, so I haven't gotten to this. I'll get back to it eventually, but it's just been kind of on the back burner for right now. So the kind of the notebook in question is this one. So this is the notebook that I've been using as my language log since February of 2018, which is honestly quite a while. And so basically, as I was mentioning, I have very few spreads left. So you'll see here, I have very few that are left in the back. And so what I was thinking about doing is like, as you can see here, I always have this left page is my legend. Um, oops, left page is the legend and the right page is my tracker. But most months I don't actually use up the entire page. So I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna set up, I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up December now and I wanna do a new color code because I haven't done that in a while. I think, you know, it's time. Like I've honestly been using this was so, wait, this is the old color code that I had. And then I switched to the new one like 
September of 2018, a real long time ago. Like it's been a really long time. So I think it's time to switch the color code. And this actually, I switched this color code and I use this for other things as well. Um, but the main thing I do use it for now, just cause I don't really use the color code in my bullet journal, but the main thing I use it for is for my language log. And I think it's time to switch out these colors just because a lot of these, like I know, for example, I'm running out of ink in the one for study. And I think I'm running out of ink for the one in read. So like I've just been using the pens for so long that I think it's time. So what I wanna do is basically basically set up and do December with the new color code, do it in the old format. So I have the new color code and I have a legend. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up January and do basically January, February, because that way I will definitely get through the end of 2022 in here. I do have a couple of pages left for like journaling. So this was one of the random pages. So like here, I do have another page left for journaling. At some point I need to work on like finishing that out. I'd like to like complete the pages that are like the journaling pages and stuff, but that way I'll get another year out of this notebook and then I'll decide at the end of 2022 what I want to do for a future one. So I think we're going to actually work on that first and then we are going to dive into, so basically this is language log. We'll just kind of chuck that over to the side. And then the last thing that we're going to deal with is I have my new bullet journal and then I have my collection bullet journal. So we're going to look at those next because we got some, we've got some decisions to make. So Let's go ahead. Oh, you know what I forgot? I need some scratch paper. So just have some scratch paper. I always end up needing it, so I should have grabbed it before, but we're good now. So basically I have, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, you know what? I still need these for November. Okay, I'm gonna leave them in here just so that I don't um, misplace my pens. So basically I need for a new uh, color code, I need study, write, listen, watch, read and talk. Very simple. I've been using this for like four years at this point. Um, wait, 2018, 19, 20, 21, three years. Next year will be four years. So I've been using the same like kind of system for a couple of years now and I really like it. So we're just gonna pick new colors. And my last ones, like they're kind of arbitrary. So if you look at, whoops, I literally had it right there. So if you look at this, I kind of have like pale to like a little bit brighter, pale to a little bit brighter, but it, it's honestly, it's arbitrary. Um, just like however my brain decides that I want to like do the colors. So, oops, we're gonna, I am definitely not gonna be able to fit this all on screen. Well, maybe, okay. So, cause it's actually gonna be time, I think, to mess around with a couple of different pens. The ones that I typically have out are my color code pens. So they're, they're the ones that like get used up the most. So our last round of colors, so we did, oops, if we wanna look at the first set. So the last ones were like kind of greens, browns, and oranges. And then this time around was like yellows, pinks, and blues. So, and I do like them. I want them to be pale enough because I do write um, in the little square. So I'd never pick any of like the super dark colors just because it's less easy to read. So I think that we're gonna do Hmm. I kind of want to like use some of these ones maybe because I don't really use these ones for like anything else. So what if we do, yeah, I mean, it just has to be like legible enough. Like you, you can't even see this, but like, if you look on here, it's just like a pale yellow. Um, so that would be a good one. So study, let's do, Ooh, I want to do this one for listen. Oh, <gasps> Wait a minute, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a pastel rainbow. <laughs> All right, so wait, hold on. We need pink. We need a pastel like orange. I don't know if I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna do blue. I need six. I'm gonna do purple. Um, so yeah, I really need a pastel orange. Why isn't there one? That makes me sad. What about this one? How like, no, that's too gray. Um, I think this is too bright. And also I use that a ton in my spreads because I actually like that color. Uh, wait, you go here, I think. Um, none of you are like light enough. And these are honestly all the same freaking color. So you're not gonna be able to see. That one's very, very pale. What about this one? No, that's not very legible. Oops, come on. How about this one? Oh, that one's actually quite a bit brighter. Um, no, it's too close to study. I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference. That 
one's too bright. This is, oh, this is my normal. I could use that one a bunch. That one's not in super great condition. I'm trying to pick ones that I like never use. Excuse you, get in there. I'm trying to pick ones I never use just so I can like use some pens that I, I wouldn't necessarily pick for my color code. All right, let's 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 see if this is, it's too bright. It's honestly like, it's honestly too bright. Hold on. Like, can you see that? It just like sticks out. But I don't know that I necessarily have a better option. So pink. Yeah, that's too bright. I don't like that. Darn. I feel like I kind of want a different one for listen. That yellow's a little pale. All right, that's not the worst, but I think I want to do this one. Yeah, it's just, it's not that different, but it's just slightly better. Um, here. The, this orange is going to bug me. It's too bright. All right, what do we got? Ooh, okay, let's do that one. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Okay, so we're going to, oh, hold on a second. We're getting to where I'm like losing my place. In my bin. Here we go. What number are you? Nine, nine, nine. No, wait. Nine, three, three. Not nine, nine, three. Nine, three, three. It is one, two, three, four, five in. Okay, good. It's this one. Okay. So, this is going to be the new color code. And I think that'll be fun. Just like a little, a little different. And then... I'll have one month where I have the old system just so that I know like what I'm gonna do and then I'll just use this color code for the next year and all will be well. So we're gonna do, I'm at some point gonna need to get new microns because I'm gonna run out of ink in them because I use them so much. Okay, so hold on a second. So this is, so, oops, study, write, listen, watch, read, talk and then oh, I have to switch them around this way because I do write the number just because as you saw there are a couple that have very similar numbers and so if I'm not careful I will mix it up with a different color that's just like similar but not exactly the same so that's why I write the numbers down and also if I have similar colors that I pull out for my monthly um, I don't put away the wrong set of colors when I'm like cleaning that up that is not Centered. We're gonna do the colors on the right side. Meh, it's fine. Okay, so, oh wait, uh, December is 31 days. So. What did I do? Oh, I should have skipped down one. Oh well, too bad. Too late now. Okay, so there's 31 days, and we're just gonna do, because normally I start my, my monthly up here. This is the first time in like two years I've messed it up, so. Oh well. Ooh, these pens are, the tips are getting kind of flattened, which is never good. So this is 2021. Go ahead and do. My color code. Oops. It will take me a second to like get used to the new colors. Just because I've been doing the other one for so long, it's kind of automatic in a lot of ways, um, but I think this is a good time to make a change. Okay, so, oops, there we go. So now I need just one of my pictures. I'm gonna take the one on top, which is Goblin. It's fitting, because I'm rewatching that show. Okay, so. Um, So that will be for next month. We'll use the new one. And actually what I'm gonna go ahead and do just so that I don't forget, cause this is what we're worried about forgetting. <laughs> Not really concerned about December. I'll remember probably December. January is another story. So I'm gonna just go ahead and set up this monthly. And unfortunately this does mean that I, no, 2022. 
Already did the wrong year, cool. So unfortunately this does mean that I am not gonna do my picture because I don't know where I'm gonna have free space. So if at the end of the month I do have, I do have more space left, I am gonna go ahead and do that picture, but I'm just not gonna do it at the beginning, just in case. Okay, good. So there, hopefully this will be enough so that I remember from January on, I'm gonna just not do my color code and I'll just refer back to the color code in December and I will just go ahead and use one page for each of them. Honestly, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm so close to fitting one more year in here that I would rather just do that and get a new notebook at the end of next year so that I can like keep an entire year sort of in here. Since I did start in February, I have basically all of 2018 minus January, because I hadn't started it yet. Um, and so I'd really like to get an entire, like another year in here. So that's what we're gonna do for the language log. So that we can kind of put to the side. Oops, sorry, bookmark, get in, nope. It's November, come on, there we go. Okay, so bookmark in November, we'll do that. And so that means that next year I have to think about a new language log, but I don't have to do it this year. Okay, so these are gonna go, I'm gonna probably just keep these on my desk until January, just because I do still have November and December, no, I still have November, oh, I'll just keep these until December. I have November still with the old color code, so I'll leave that in my pen case, and then at the end of November, when I'm getting ready to switch over for December, I'll put these in and I will retire the color code pens that I've been using back into my, oops, back into my Tombow box for future use in like monthly schemes and that kind of stuff, but I'm not gonna use them for the color code. Okay, so that, I can move that out of the way. So that means that we are gonna go ahead and take a look at the final two, which are my bullet journal and my collection bullet journal. So let's take a look, actually, let's take a look at 2022 goals first. So this is the piece of paper that I did for my top five goals, which is what we talked about on Tuesday. So these are basically all of the same things that we talked about. So these will have kind of pride of place and I will do my top five setup, which we'll take a peek at that. But these are my 2022 goals. So I have a couple of things on here and these were just like really jotted down sort of things. So I have my October doctor's appointment day. That's something I try and do every single year because I I hate going to the doctor, I dread it, so I have to like kind of make a day where I just like sit down and I make all of my appointments and then it's done. I have this for the April holidays, I wanna do a spring cleaning. I actually did it this year, sort of like just, I was inspired to do it and it was actually really nice to do like a big deep clean, like you know, take everything off the shelves and dust everything because obviously I don't necessarily do that every single time I actually dust and like go through some things and just be like, oh, like do I know what all these cords are for? Have I gone through my pantry to make sure that nothing's out of date? So I wanna do that. I am gonna keep my same reading challenge. So 50 books, five in French, three in Spanish, one in Italian. I know I keep putting Italian on there. I know I have not actually succeeded in reading a book in Italian in the past uh, two-ish years that I've done this. One a year, one of these years I'm gonna get it, I think it might be this year. So even though I do read more than 50 books, 50 is a good number for me, like I just, I w one, I wanna have like the little gold star of actually finishing my Goodreads reading challenge, and two, I feel like 50 is a good number, and if I ever get busy doing other stuff, I don't wanna like feel guilty that, oh my gosh, I only read, you know, 50 books and not 80 books, like, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. So I'm gonna keep that. I am going to do, for Korean, I still, so I got a year of Talk To Me In Korean premium classes, and so I do wanna keep doing those. I think that I'm probably not gonna buy, like, the next year. I think I'll probably cancel my subscription, unless I get really, really motivated with it, just, I am not really like a super online class kind of person, so I wanna get as much out of it as I can this year, but I think that'll be kind of it. And then I want to watch, so I wanna finish watching um, Strong Girl Bong Soon on, so that's the show that I'm watching in Korean with Korean subtitles using learning languages with Netflix, which is a, like a Chrome plugin. I wanna finish watching that this year, ideally I'm over halfway through, and then I'd like to pick another show and do another one next year to, like it's really good for input, so I wanna do that. I also wanna watch a show in Italian. This is another one that's been on 
for at least a year, possibly two years, maybe three. So I want to watch a show in Italian, so in Italian with Italian subtitles, so that's like kind of on my thing. I do have Italy trip on here. I think that what I want to do is go to Italy in the summer for my summer holidays, and I actually have to kind of update this because I think I'm going to have my trip goals, so... We're gonna just do a little like trips. Um, as you can see, these are kind of like organized, but they're not really labeled in categories, so we're gonna have to do that. So I have my Italy trip, and I think I wanna do this in the summer. I wanna go to Switzerland in April, and I actually wanna start um, booking that soon. And then I think that my parents are planning to come to France in February, so I'll have to kind of plan for that so I actually am planning a couple of trips but I'm not really leaving Europe um, at this point so at least one of them I think is gonna be a train trip and then and actually the one in France is probably gonna be a train trip or if we rent a car and then Italy I might end up flying if I don't feel like doing the train we'll see how that goes so I do have a couple of trips that I want to work on planning I also <laughs> this is a weird goal but I really want to figure out how to watch Gentleman Jack or the Nevers um, because the ones that like the streaming services they're on I actually don't have and some of them are not actually available in France and so this is probably this shouldn't be a goal this actually should go on my running list you know what running list this is gonna be yeah we're gonna do that on the running list so I want to work on decluttering my laptop and the textbooks I have tons of textbooks that they just mail us because they're like the teachers like copy or whatever and some of them I use absolutely and so I'll keep those but there's some of them that like I haven't taught like sixth grade in like four years and I basically don't actually ever want to teach sixth grade again and by the time like if it ever comes around that I do like these books might be kind of out of date because some of them are like six or seven years old and like the the topics that we teach change the way that we present materials can change and all of that so I want to go through those I need to go through emails I have so many email accounts and like I've archived a bunch of emails and stuff but I need to go through and like work on deleting and unsubscribing and then at some point I need to work on decluttering pictures so it looks looks like I actually don't have that many like super big goals this year because I kind of this was my first pass and then I figured I would add more things as I sort of see how things are going so specifically seeing how things are going as we plan together today so and of course you have to kind of re-add in the top five goals I didn't actually repeat them over here so let's take a look um we're actually gonna start with my collection bullet journal just because that has kind of like more big picture stuff. So my collection bullet journal, I've been using this for a while. So I actually have a couple of sticky notes because they're things I wanna deal with. So I have a four year overview that, oh, you know what we need also here. I need my notes book from this year because I realized after the fact that I actually have my four-year tickler which is the new version of my four-year overview is actually in here and I started in 2021 whoops you can see that up there so I think that what I want to do actually is go ahead and update everything and then call this spread done um, just so I don't have it in two like in two points so let's take a peek so I want to do language exams so this is one that I've wanted to do for a while that is just like not a high priority. Basically, I want to do Italian B2 level, um, maybe do Korean. And then I don't know if I want to do Italian or sorry, uh, Spanish and French in C1 level. I don't actually know. Like that's not like it's not it's a someday thing. You know what I mean? Like it's not a I've decided on this. So let me go ahead and do my little boxes. Uh, that one is done, that one. Okay, so here, I think here we're going to, I need to dry clean coats. Meant to do it this summer, did not do it. I wanna do it eventually. Um, 2022, yep that's already on there okay so basically I really didn't have that much I had already kind of moved some stuff over and also this one is basically almost like out of date like the last year was 2020 whoops the last round this one is 2021 so it's this year but I had a couple of things that were open on here that like I just hadn't gotten to yet so we're gonna just check off the bottom it's kind of how I 
know that it's done, so that's good. Um, Cause basically what I'm trying to do is get to the point where I'm like basically done with this one. So most of these, these are all old lists that I no longer use, um, like old goals that I no longer am doing, reading stuff, like all that kind of stuff. So this is all, this is all good. So that's last year that, no, that was two years ago. This is last year. Oh, 2020, the last year. I just like forget that it existed. Okay, so this is this year. So I'm actually doing really well on my reading challenge, as you can see here. I haven't like fully updated it. I still have not, I have to, I'm actually currently reading my third book in Spanish for the year. I read two stories out of 10 of a book in Italian. We'll see if I get to that. And actually in pencil started tallying up because last year I actually did a bit of Italian. This will be a separate video where I tallied up audiobooks, comic books, and a manga and nonfiction that I read just to kind of see how it like sort of played out. And then I also wrote down how many total I had over the side here. So I am going to do that again this year so I just sort of started counting those up um, but I'm, I'm not done with the year so we'll deal with that later so this tracker I honestly really really like I haven't changed it in like six years and I'm not planning on doing it anytime soon so I have done an extra overflow chart because I'm over 100 books now so I don't think that I'll like I, I don't think I'll finish out the end of these it's like another 20 books I don't think I'm gonna read another 20 books this year. So my plan is I'm actually gonna go ahead and do my 2022 reading here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my same spread as normal. So because that one's already done, that's not really what we're looking at. What I wanna look at is textile stuff. So 2022, I do wanna have some textile goals. And I say textile because even though it's mostly sewing, it could also be hand sewing or embroidery or quilting. Uh, but I do wanna have a couple of those sorts of goals. So I wanna do, and actually you know what we're gonna do, it on a scratch paper over here, cause we'll have a textile one. Okay. Um, so I like, here's the thing. I do a ton of sewing. I actually sew quite a lot. And if you can see here, I've actually, like I left it pretty open-ended where it was like, just do three big projects. Um, and so I ended up doing a beret and then a bag and two half moon zips. And that was like a set that went together. I wanted to do some more hand sewing. So garment was a bit of a stretch. I hand sewed a beret, a, like a literal hat. I didn't actually hand quilt anything this year. I have hand quilted in the past, just not this year. And then I have my make nine, which the 50 stuff is all done. I'm about halfway through the Edwardian Victorian stuff. And then I've not really done anything on the layering garments. And then I didn't do me may made this year because I just like decided not to do it. So what I'm trying to decide is you know what do I want to actually do for like do I want to have a make nine do I want to have like more broad categories like this I feel like I have better luck doing open-ended types of projects where as the year progresses, I realize like, oh, this is a project I want to make and oh, I can like hand sew it or oh, I can embroider it also. This, I do think that my Make Nine worked better this year, but I don't really plan my projects around this. Like that's just not the way that I project plan. And so I, I don't know. I don't know. How do we want to do this? Because in my top five goals, I have some like sewing stuff. And I'm wondering if I even want to do a textile spread in my collection bullet journal, if I just want to add it to my 2022 goals, but like keep it like small, but vague. I, I, yeah, I don't know. So, cause I have this coat that I do want to do. Like that's one kind of specific project. These are all, okay. So sewing projects, finish all your unfinished projects. So UFOs and mending, learn to draft and or drape and do the charmed princess coat. Those are kind of like the big ones. I have ideas for projects like out the wazoo. So I think that me putting down specific projects is not really useful for me. I think I'm better off if I put down skills. So like embroidery, hand sewing, quilting, like that kind of stuff. I think those sorts of things tend to work a little bit better for me, but I don't know. Okay, I think I'm gonna do skills. So this is gonna be textiles. I wanna hand sew. I really would like to have like that practice of hand sewing a garment. And I'm thinking maybe what I wanna do, I've been planning on making a chemise to wear under a corset because I don't have one. I think maybe that's what I wanna do. 
because it's something you're not going to see so if the stitches are a little wonky it's fine but it's and it's also like not super complicated but it is harder than a hat which is what i did this year so i think i want to do hand sew a chemise i had this idea that i wanted to do a different quilt for a queen size quilt for my bed because I literally have the cotton batting for it and also because I think I would actually use it. So a queen size quilt. I'm gonna have to break some of these down into like better pieces, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. I wanna do another embroidery project. I love embroidering. I tend to only embroider stuff if it's like, like I typically embroider on like bags or on a hat or on whatever. Um, and so I don't typically do like embroidery stuff just to embroider. It typically is an embroidery piece that I'm then going to sew into something else. And I find that that is like, it makes it a little bit more useful for me. And so I, I tend to like it more and I, I get more enjoyment out of it. So I'd like to do some kind of an embroidery project. I think I'm gonna just put down like one rather than this year I had three because I don't necessarily embroider that much. I do it when I have like a, a need or a desire to do a specific project. So I think we're going to do that. I want to do... Do you know what? I think I want to do a sew my stash. I think I want to do a sew my stash. I think that's going to be the best thing because I'm starting to get like a lot of fabric and I have a lot of ideas for that fabric but I need to like actually sit down and do it. So I think between sew my stash and the like unfinished projects, this very particular like fancy coat project. And then these like couple of things, I think that's good because all of my other projects, they're gonna like change and adapt throughout the year. And I actually do track all of my sewing projects. So like it's not, you know what I mean? Like I think this will be good. Okay, so that means that I am not gonna have a textile goal for this year in my collection bullet journal. It's just gonna be on my goal page. So I'm actually gonna take off this sticky note, which means I'm just gonna have my reading goal in here. So we're gonna set that up when we do the time lapse. Um, and then I am, so that'll put me up to page 98 will be my next blank page. And I've used up to page like one, I probably won't write on this page just because I'm getting some bleed through. So up to page 112. So I've got about 10 or 12 pages left. I kind of like, I do try and use this just to sort of use up pages in here. But if I don't have anything, I don't have anything. You know what I mean? Like it is what it is. So this one we're going to leave open so that we can mess around with 2020. So that means that our next step is going to be to lay out, oh my goodness, to lay out how we're going to set up the new bullet journal. So I'm going to move these. We didn't actually need this, but I might use that as like a planning page. So this is going to be my new notebook. I did do a just quick little spine like break in. So basically there, I think there might be a video on the bullet journal channel, but you basically just kind of open like different sections. So I did do that initially. So we're going to take out the bookmarks. Cool. So what I'm going to do is figure out how I'm actually going to set things up. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of do a side by side comparison with this year's bullet journal. I'm going to pull. Oh no, come on. Oh. Okay. Here, here. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Okay. So we're gonna do a side by side and kind of plan out how I wanna do stuff. So obviously like doing my little like name in there, that's gonna be fine. Where is my index, y'all? Oh, index is over here. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna do my index. I've been doing my index where I cut it in half for a long time. I'm just gonna do that. I only need two pages. So basically I am actually not gonna use the second spreads worth of, of index pages. I'll probably just kind of leave it as that, but this is gonna mean that we need to do, okay, so here we go. So on page, so one, oops, this is gonna be hard to read. Hold on, let me get not a brown pen. Let's get a black pen so it's actually kind of legible. I think that's a little better. Page one is gonna be just my name, that's easy. We're gonna do quick and dirty here. Key, I actually don't use my key for anything, so we're just gonna kind of ignore that. So page three, I'm actually gonna have my top five overview. So essentially, this page. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on intentions. I think that's a good place to put that. So we're gonna do page four to five is gonna be the index, okay? And then, so that's, that takes us up to here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my future log, but it, it's actually gonna be on the index pages because I don't need all of those index pages. So this is gonna be six to seven is gonna be future log. 
and I'm gonna do February through January like I did this year because somebody suggested that I think two years ago and it is actually super super helpful because I set up January at the end of December which means I'm in this bullet journal when I set up for January and so I don't need January in my new bullet journal I need February so that's really helpful next up I have my 2021 goals overview i think i'm going to do that the same way so that's actually going to go on my future log pages so it's going to be pages eight and nine is going to be 2022 goals overview i honestly don't think i'm changing a lot of how i've set things up because i actually really like the way that it's been going so the next thing of future goals i'm going to do quarterly 10 11 so these are for things, and I don't know if they're necessarily, I call them quarterly goals, but it's like stuff I typically do during that period of time. So it could be something that is actually on my 2022 goals that I'm like, oh, I know I'm not gonna get to this during the school year, so I'm gonna put it in quarter three during my summer holidays. You know what I mean? But it's also things like specific things I have to do at that time. So like I have to pay my quarterly taxes, I have to do, you know what I mean? So I call them goals, but it's like, goals slash tasks and it's just easier if I call them goals like that's that's the only reason so then I have my top five goals breakdown um, and I actually do like that I found that to be really helpful for this year even if I ended up changing how I actually accomplished a lot of these goals it was nice to have that breakdown and I did actually I did break it down more than I think I have done in the past and it was really helpful like doing those bite-sized pieces so I want to keep that so it takes us up to page 13 so then I have my YouTube. Oh, so this is actually one. I have my YouTube schedule. Now that I have two channels, do I need to do this differently? I need to post that. Maybe not. I mean, you know, I'm gonna do my YouTube overview calendar, the one that I keep up on my bulletin board. I think I really like doing that. I think I wanna actually do it. So let's scrub a different here. So I think what I wanna actually do is do like a list where, all right, hold on, it's gonna be like this. So I've got my pages like this. So it's gonna be YouTube. Or I might just do like YouTube calendar. I'll, I'll write out YouTube, um, but that's just for here. And then instead of doing like these vertical columns, I think what I'll do is like January, February, March, April, June, July, September, wait, June, July, August, September, October, November, wait, what? Oh, I wanna do it this way. Wait a second. Why am I, January, February, March, April, May, May, June, July, August. Everyone's just watching like what, you don't know the months. Okay, cool, there we go. So I think I wanna do it like this. So basically like have three columns and then leave space under here by week. So it'll be like week one, two, three, four and do it like that. Cause I really don't need this much space. And then I could fit the entire year on one spread. I think I'm gonna do that. And then I just have like my track of, okay, we'll have to figure out how we wanna do that, but I think I'm gonna do that. So that's gonna be, hold on a second, what page are we up to? So 14 to 15 is gonna be YouTube Cal January to December, okay? Okay, next step. So that is now gonna not be those two spreads. Okay, YouTube workflow, I love this. And I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the two, uh, do I need to do the two full spreads? Or do I, well, cause I ended up using three. What if I only did three? Oh, actually, yeah, that works out, that works out. Okay, so we're gonna do three pages of that. I'll show you why in a sec. So 14, 15, so this is gonna be 16, 17, and 18 is gonna be YouTube workflow. I'm just gonna do three, because between my two channels, I think that'll be enough, and if I need more, I can always like page thread it, and it's fine. And then, honestly, I think I'm gonna do 
just one page. This is why I was like, oh, this works out. One page of a YouTube tracker, but I'm gonna split it. So I have both of the channels. I should have done my new channel. Oh, I should probably add that. So I'm just gonna do a little sticky here, TSS. So that's, that's so Scott. I'm gonna do a little sticky here so that I do that. So this is gonna be now page, so this is 16 through 18. So page 19, it's gonna be on a right page now. This is YouTube tracker. So I'm gonna do split sunshine and stationary and that's so Scott. So do both of those because I honestly am not growing that fast. So like, it's fine. I don't need a whole bunch of space. And then, and then that's gonna mean that page 20 goes into quarter one, which I'm actually gonna film a, I have several of these notebooks left over from when I was using the Projo because you would get one P book and one end book. And I always like, I used up an, a P book in a quarter, but the end books would sometimes last me six months or a year. And so I actually started this one in 2021 at the beginning of the year, which is why I've got my four year tickler. I literally even have 2022 possible goals and I didn't fill it out here. I ended up doing a brainstorming on another paper, like holidays, stuff for Italy, sewing, happy mail, trip ideas, like just some random, just like random little things that I kind of plop in here. And I'm actually only up to like page 25. Yeah, I'm only up to page 25. And so I'm actually just gonna keep using this for 2022. I'm gonna use it until I run out because there's like 60 pages in here and I'm on page 25. Like I am not even, I'm almost halfway through and this has been the entire year. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use this again for next year because it is useful. Um, I don't use this for a ton of stuff anymore. So I will just kind of hold on to it. So that's kind of the last, I think of the moving bits and pieces. So I think it's time to do a time lapse. So I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse. I'm only gonna set up the spreads because Friday is gonna be filling them in. So I'll see you after the time lapse.
So we are going to wrap up day four of Mega Goal Week by going through the spreads that I have set up. And we're just gonna wrap it up at the table over here because that'll be the easiest way to show you. So first up is my collection bullet journal. Of course I did not. Oh, I did put the bookmark there. So I did go ahead and just fill out my 2022 reading challenge spreads. And you might have noticed that as I was nearing the end, I had already set everything up and I was like, wait a minute. So I normally have this labeled as, let's see. So I have my tracker and then I have my tracker overflow. But because of the way that it laid out this year, I had my intro page over here and just jumped right into tracking. And so I filled it out and I was like, wait, I don't really need like the header. And this lets me add in three more books than I would normally be able to fit on these spreads. So I ended up just whiting out what I had already set up and just bumping the top of the tracker up to the top. And I didn't actually set up a next page because I don't have anything else that I'm planning on putting in here. Oh my gosh, do you see all the white out on my hands? My, <laughs> my whiteout, so this one, I don't know what happened, but it just like broke, so I was trying to use it until I couldn't, and it, it got everything. Like it got white out all over my hands. Anyway, so because I don't have anything else going in here this year, as of right yet, I am just gonna fill out these two spreads and then see how things go, and just, you know, add things in as I need them. But I went ahead and just did the two, since this will last me for about like 60 books at least, I think. Let's see, how much does it do? Um, so I get about 30 on a page. So it'll be about 70 books since I had a couple of extra ones over there. So that'll take me through most of the year. And if I do need an overflow, I'll go ahead and do that when I actually need it. So that is all that's in here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just put my bookmark or my elastic actually over here because this is the one that I actually am currently using. And then we have in my bullet journal, which this is such like a bright blush that it, it kind of messes with my lighting, but it's fine. So I did go ahead and just do, and this is the first time I've actually put the year in here, but to my little intro page, I did go ahead and completely fill out the top five like overview page just because this was easy enough to do. Now, as you can see, I completely eyeballed it. So these three are more squished than these two are. Do we care? No, not in the slightest. Um, so I just have the main sort of thing for here. And so then I just did under it. So this is, for example, plus French is my citizenship. So it's interview. So I'm hoping to get, hoping to get my application in by the end of the year, which means I'll be studying for the interview next year. That's like the top five goal. No work weekend. So I just wrote out because obviously NWW in three years, am I going to remember what that is? Maybe not. So no work weekends or evenings in parentheses. I'm not tracking the evenings, but that's like the goal. And then charmed princess coat. So plan, save, make. UFO and mend. So complete all UFO and mending. Draft and drape. Learn to draft or drape. So not a lot of information on these because we are going to fill out that more detailed planning page. Then I have my index. There's literally nothing to go here because I'll just jump right in on the first one. It's already got the label up here at the top, so I'll just jump right in at the first one, which actually will we'll fill out the index, I think, on Friday, so tomorrow, basically. So I have that all set up. Then I have... Oh, crumb. What did I miss? <gasps> oh, no. Are you joking? I somehow missed a page. No, that was not what I meant to do. Well, guess what? I just have an extra page that I don't know what I'm gonna do with yet. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. That, that's for future me to decide. Okay, so whoops, I accidentally messed that up. So my future log was supposed to go here. It did not. Oops. Uh, so I have my future log over here, which this is, okay. 
I'm actually, and you'll know, probably have noticed this on my other spreads, I relied heavily on the little like guide marks here. So if you remember from the review, um, it actually splits it so half thirds, and then you also have it on the inside, which obviously I drew over it, so you can't really see it. So this is thirds, half. It actually helped so, so much. So I was able to just like, I didn't have to count or anything. I just followed those lines. And so that's the reason why a lot of my pages, I did like write in a title up top, just because if I tried to do it here, I would have to count it and do math and like, ugh, we're not doing that. So for the future log, that was easy peasy. So I just have, um, by like going vertically. So February, March, April, May, June, July. And I think I ended up doing all of mine vertically, even for ones that I had originally planned to go like this. Like my, I just, kind of went with it. So February through January for my future log. Then I have my 2022 goals overview and I did my four main categories, which we're going to fill this in on Friday. So I've got home language, travel, and textiles. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. Then I've got my quarterly goals. Um, so again, this is one where I wrote in the top bit up here so that I could just use the halfway mark. And then I actually ended up writing my numbers to the left because there's quite a large margin. So that way I didn't have to use up any of the actual like dot space to do that. And then top five goals. So this is where we're gonna break everything down. I only did the label on this one because I wanted to, oh, you know what? No, I'm like thinking about what to do with that second index page. It's gonna bug me. Anyway, it's fine. We're not redoing everything because I only just now realized it's fine. So I just have the header on here, but we're gonna work on this one as well on Friday. Next up, I have my calendar. So this is one I was originally planning to do January, February, March, April. And then I was like, wait, why would I do that? Because this is literally just in the quarters, which is how I plan. So like that makes sense. So I basically followed, you might've seen, I put my ruler down here so that I wouldn't go over the halfway point. And then I followed based on the third. So I actually followed the dots. I just didn't draw like borders on it. So typically I am not going to do any more than four videos a month between my two channels. So typically I'm going to have two videos a month for sunshine and stationery and one or two videos for that. So Scott. And so I'm just going to write that in here. So I have to kind of play around with how I want to do this. Like, do I want to do it by week? Do I want to do it by the day I post it? Like, I don't know, but we're going to try it. You know what I mean? Like try it. See, this was like, honestly like three times faster to do it this way than it was to do my other way and like a ton less counting so I'm if it works I'm gonna be really happy then I have my YouTube workflow this one I did a little, I messed up a bunch on this one because I just was like oh this seems like it should work and like started drawing lines and was like oh wait I'm gonna run out of space so I had to kind of fix it so I originally this one I originally gave six dots yeah, so I did six squares for the first one, and that meant that my last one is only two squares, whereas I prefer to do five squares, three squares, and everything else is two squares. But I was like just kind of not counting, so I messed it up. And then I also messed up this one because I thought I had counted five, and apparently I had counted six, and that is what it is. Um, so that is all set up and ready to go for next year. And then for the YouTube tracker, I am just gonna do, so I'm probably going to follow the way that my tracker goes for here. I'm not doing it yet, just because I don't know what colors I wanna do, but I'm gonna do probably on January 1st, whatever my starting thing is. And I might actually go back in and add like a split here and do that's so Scott and do like, you know, the day I started and then like what I'm currently at or whatever. But yeah, that's, that's something to mess with later. Um, so that is actually the end. So I am finishing two pages later. It's not a big deal. It's a difference of page 19 and page 21. Like it's not that big of a deal. I still have a ton of space left, but I'm a little annoyed that I have a spread. I'm not going to need it for an index. Like I 100% just will not need that for an index. So like, what am I going to use it for? Ooh, what if I did trip planning? Yeah, what if I do that? Okay, maybe we'll do that. So let me just like, hold on. Because I totally messed that up. So here, I'm just going to stick this here. We're going to decide later. So in terms of the plan with me side of things, we are finished. And I am actually going to meet you back here tomorrow to fill in some spreads so we can see how the quarterly or how the yearly goals are kind of all work out. So if you have any questions on how I set anything up today, let me know down below, especially if you have any questions about my other notebooks, you know, 
this is probably gonna be a really long video, but way back in the beginning of the video where we talked about the other notebooks. If you have questions about those, let me know. And yeah, I will see you back here tomorrow to finish out Mega Goal Week. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there, so you can check those out if you would like to. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.